Hello everybody and welcome to Bird's Nest Designs. Uh, my name is Denise Cox and I am a Stampin' Up! demonstrator here in Trail, British Columbia, Canada. And I am here tonight for my weekly Tutorial Tuesday here on Facebook. And today I have a really fun um, unfold card to share with you using the adorable Sweet Gingerbread stamp set. So I'm just going to give you a few minutes or a minute or so to pop on. Make sure we got some people here visiting. Hello. I'll say hello when you get here. I'm just going to check that I'm live in the right place. Um, let me just double check that. Refresh the screen. I think we are. There we are. Okay, so we're live in the right place. Awesome. Hello, Tina. Thank you for being here. Um, I've got the... Com Hello, Sherry. Um, so I've got comments here to the sides. So if you see me looking, I'm just checking to see if there's any comments there and see who's watching with us tonight. Um, got a little bit of a different setup here tonight, so um, bear with me. Well, hopefully it's going to work out. I am in my office instead of my craft room. Um, so hopefully all is going to be well. Hello, Sonia. Um, all right. So like I said, we're going to feature the sweet gingerbread stamp set. This is what I'm featuring on my blog this week. Um, when I set out to feature this, I was going to, of course, showcase the bundle. However, after I did my post and my blog yesterday, sharing this cute card here, um, I realized that the gingerbread house dies are all sold out. So we can't get those anymore. So I redesigned a card this afternoon that uses just the stamp without the dies. So I just want to show you how awesome the stamp set is, even if you can't purchase those beautiful dies. Um, so we still have tons and tons and tons of amazing products on the clearance rack. There's still lots of goodies to purchase through the last chance promotion. So please don't forget to look at those. It's a great time to save some money, get some stocking stuffers, buy some Christmas gifts, um, stock up on your own supplies because they some of them are up to 60% off so you're not going to get a better deal um, on those products anytime soon so make sure you do go on and check that out um, things are selling out but if you go on quickly and place your order online then you'll get what you, whatever you can add to your cart is available obviously um, yeah so I don't think I have much more to tell you guys tonight there's been a lot going on as far as um, stepping up promotions go which I just discussed with you uh, the new catalog is coming I'm hoping I've already ordered them for my customers I'm hoping that they're gonna be here this week um, once they get here and I get them all labeled up and ready to go then I will be sending them out to customers who've placed an order with me um, and if you are a new customer that would like to shop with me and would like a catalog just reach out I'm happy to send one anywhere in Canada um, all right so if there's no other questions or anything else I need to tell you, I'm going to just flip the camera down and we're going to start crafting. So bear with me. Close your eyes if you get a little car sick because this might be a little rocky tonight. So we'll see. See my hand there. Okay, so I'm just going to flip this camera. Well, that wasn't too bad. So we'll just zoom it in. Tighten that up. Okay, I think we're good. All right, we can see things. Perfect. I'm going to turn the light on. There we go. Okay, so here is the sweet gingerbread stamp set that we're going to use. We're going to be using a really, really fun color palette tonight. So we're going to use Parakeet Party Bermuda Bay Polished Pink, which is my favorite. Stampin' or stamping early espresso and crumb cake. All right, so those are the fun colors we're gonna use. Like I said, we're gonna be making a fun fold card. So let's get to it. So we're gonna start. We're only using very small amount of pieces tonight. So the first is a five and a half by four and a quarter piece of Bermuda Bay. The second is a four by five and a quarter piece of Bermuda Bay. A four and a quarter by three and a quarter piece of Parakeet Party. And then a four by nine piece of basic white. And we're gonna need some crumb cake. So bear with me one moment because I forgot my strip of crumb cake out here.
Okay, now we have the crumb cake paper that we're going to need for later. Okay, now we should have everything. Sorry about that. I see a few more have joined us, so thank you for being here tonight. Um, there, we got a little more focus on the camera there. Okay, hi Carol, welcome. I had forgotten my crumb cake piece. So aside from the pieces I just mentioned to you, we do need a strip, um, just a one inch strip of crumb cake, which I had left on the desk in my bathroom. Okay, so there is the pieces we need. I've given you the measurements. I will post the measurements in the YouTube description when I upload this to my YouTube channel as well. Okay, first thing we're going to do is we're going to take our four by five and a quarter piece of Bermuda Bay and we're going to emboss it using the Quatrefoil Tile Embossing Folder. So this is in the annual catalog and you do need to use the regular stamp and cut and emboss machine because it is a six inch wide folder. And what I'm going to show you is this line on here that by the stamping up logo is designed so that you can place your paper in there, line it up, and that's going to ensure that your pattern goes straight. So you're not going to have a crooked pattern if you line it up along that line and that just moved a slight hair there. So that's what that line is there for. So I'm going to go ahead and put it through my machine. So to do that, we need plate number one. I'm going to show you here. So plate number one. Then we need a plate number three, which is the clear. We're going to put our folder in. We're going to put the hinge towards the machine. And then we're going to top it with another number three plate. So I'm going to go ahead and roll that through the machine. And it's a not a 3D embossing folder, so that's why we need the two clear plates. It's just a standard embossing folder. So then when we pop that out of there, we're going to have this beautiful embossed piece of paper. So let's set that one aside. Okay, so now that I have that embossed, I can go ahead and attach that to the four and a quarter by five and a half piece of Bermuda Bay. And the reason I'm doing that, and I didn't just emboss this main piece, is because this um, makes it a little more sturdy by having the two layers together, because this is forming our base for the card. So I'm just gonna adhere that on there. as even as possible. Okay, so like I said, this is the base of our card now. So I'm going to just set that aside. Actually, you know what I'm, yeah, I'm going to set that aside. And then I'm going to bring in my score pal. So that's this guy here. And as I told you in the beginning, this piece of paper here measures um, four inches by nine. So if we're gonna hold the nine inch piece up along the top, so on the long edge, we're gonna go ahead and score it at three inches and six inches. Next, we're going to fold that into a Z. So I'm going to hold this is going to be our bottom. We're going to fold this down and then we're going to fold it back on itself. So you will need a bone folder. Oh, this one. There's my good one. I have one that is really inky from when I re-ink my ink pads. And then I have this one that is somewhat clean. Um, so we're going to make sure that we really crisp these folds up with our bone folder because we want this to lay as flat as possible. Okay. 
All right, so there is our accordion type of fold that we're gonna create. And now we're gonna go ahead and stamp it. So we're going to hold it open like so. And I have got almost all of the stamp sets, all of the stamped images from the stamp set already on blocks because we are going to use the majority of them. So first of all, we're gonna create a scene on this top half here, our top third. So I'm gonna work my way from left to right when I stamp, because I wanna make sure that I'm gonna fit all of the images in that I want to have on there. So we're gonna start with these cute little lollipops and the gumdrops. And we're gonna use polished pink for this stamping. So I am just gonna close this just so I have a better surface to work on. So we're gonna have one of the lollipops right close to the edge. And then we'll have another one right close to that, maybe a little bit higher. So basically I wanna get three lollipops into this little section quite close together. Ink isn't staying on that one very well. Okay, so we've got our three lollipops. And then I'm gonna use our little gumdrop stamp here. So to do this one, I'm going to stamp it off first. So I'm inking it, stamping off on my scrap paper. And then I'm gonna make this like a mound that these lollipops are sticking out of. So I'm gonna do the same thing on all three. And then I'm gonna stagger in some more just to kind of make it look like there's a collection of gumdrops. Now you could switch colors with this too, but I just, I really, I really like pink. So we're gonna stick it all with pink. All right, so now we've got our lollipops there. And close up this pink for a minute. And then we're gonna use crumb cake and we're gonna stamp the gingerbread house. So the house has got a few steps to it. First being, of course, the, the base of our house. It's the main structure of our house we're gonna do in crumb cake. And that is a really juicy ink pad. So let me just see how that's gonna stamp. It almost looks like it should have my little mat under it. So let me just grab that. So I've just got one of these foam mats for stamping. And sometimes, depending on the surface you're using, sometimes it is helpful to have a little bit of foam underneath. So we're going to do that today. I'm going to stamp the house really close to these lollipops. And now we get to have some fun and decorate up our little gingerbread house. So using some early espresso. We're going to put a roof on our house. So here's the little scalloped roof line. Let's see if I can line that up with the camera over top. Ooh, not too bad. And then we're gonna have some little icing marks here. So if you can see that, it's a really fun stamp. And we're gonna stamp that on the house here. So cute. All right, so now the door and the windows need to be stamped. So I'm gonna use Bermuda Bay to tie it in with the card base that we're using. So using my Bermuda Bay, I'm going to ink up the door and just try and line that up. Oh, perfect. Awesome. Okay. So there's our door and then we're going to do the windows. There's a lot of stamping steps to this stamp set, but it is so worth it. It is absolutely adorable. So you can see I've got a little heart over here. We're going to use that in a minute. So I want to make sure I don't get blue ink on my heart. <laughs> So I'm going to ink up the windows and then I don't want them to be full strength Bermuda base. So I'm going to stamp them off again. And this is a great way if you don't have all the colors, but you want to have different shades, stamping it off is a great alternative. So you do get two completely different colors just by doing that simple stamping off technique. 
Okay, so there is our house. One last thing I do want to do, so I'm going to pull out my pink again. Now that heart that we were using, I'm going to peel the windows off. We're done with them now. So I'm going to peel them off and just set them aside. So now I can use this little heart. I just had it on the block so I didn't misplace it. It's quite tiny. So we'll go ahead and ink up the heart. And we're going to put a heart right here above the door. So cute. Okay, now we need to fill in something over here. So close up all these other ink pads. Now all of the stamps I'm using, all of them are from the Sweet Gingerbread stamp set. So if you are loving all these different images, then that stamp set is still available. Um, it's in the last chance section. So here we've got this cute little tree. So I'm going to stamp the tree once in full strength. I'm using Parakeet Party, remember? And then I'm going to move it over and stamp it again, just to kind of give it a shading. It's so light with this color, you probably can't see it in the camera, but it is giving it a nice kind of shadow of the lighter green. Okay, so there is that part. Now we're going to do... We're going to open it up because when you open it on the card, you're going to be able to see all of this. So we're going to use our early espresso. We're going to use polished pink and we're going to use parakeet party. Move that out of the way. So there's some great sentiments in this stamp set. So we're going to stamp sending love right here and then we're going to stamp down here we're going to stamp from our home to yours now that's a really cute sentiment in itself the way that card reads but we're going to jazz it up a little and we're going to do some more trees so we'll put a couple trees over here i'm intentionally making them crooked just so they're fun whimsical and then over here we're going to use that heart what can i do with the heart right here so sending love we're going to stamp Ooh, there's a lot of ink on there let's be careful about that we're going to stamp the heart once and then move it and i'm going to stamp it again so i'm just getting that double shaded again i'm showing you a lot of that technique tonight just the stamp set really lends well to that so we're going to get two different shades perfect now that is cute what do you guys think so far all right, so let's close up our inks. We're done stamping with everything except we're gonna need a little wee bit of early espresso in a moment. All right, so I have a piece here that measures four and a quarter by three and a quarter. When this is folded all up, this is four by three. So I'm going to attach this onto our Parakeet Party cardstock, just using a little bit of my liquid glue. I'm just going to get a nice even border all the way around if we can. All right, so there is that. And we're not finished yet, but we are going to go ahead and attach this to our card base. So remember, this was our card base here. We can actually get rid of that now. So again, using my liquid glue. Just gonna attach my parakeet party to the center of my card base. Trying to keep it straight. <laughs> Sometimes that's harder than others. Okay. So as you see, this card, this is the gist of our card. It's gonna open like that. That's a really fun interactive card to give to somebody at Christmas, right? So now I want to just finish it up by giving a little, adding a little bit of pizzazz to the front of our card. So first thing first, we're going to add some snow. So right now it looks like our lollipops and our trees and our house are kind of floating in midair. So I'm going to use my Wink of Stella 
and this is the clear pen. This is available in the annual catalog. It's very glittery and it's very, very pretty. So I hope you guys can see that. If not, I will hold it up to the camera in a minute, but I'm just brushing that over kind of right up to these images. And when you're using it, it does say push right here. So you just push gently and it will feed more of the fluid into the paintbrush so that you can get continue on with your painting of the glitter. <laughs> All right, so there we go. So I'm just, like I said, this is, to me, this is like what it is right now outside. It's so cold that our s snow is sparkly. Okay, so we've got that done. Love, love, love the Wink of Stella. So if you guys can see this, I'm going to hold it up closer to the camera in hopes that you can see the glitter that that has added to the bottom of the card. So it's a nice, fine sparkle. Oh, hello, mom. Thanks for popping in. Um, okay, so there's our nice sparkly snow. On this one quarter inch wide card crumb cake cardstock, <laughs> that was a tongue twister, um, we're going to go ahead and use the banners pick a punch. Again, this is from the annual catalog. And we're going to go ahead and flag the end. So we're just going to put that right in through this track here. And then I always like to flip it over and just make sure that it's centered in that hole and then pop it out. And then we're going to use the last sentiment that's in the stamp set that reads, have a sweet Christmas. So we'll stamp that. Make sure it's nice and inked up. We're going to stamp that really close to the bannered edge. like so. And now we'll close that up. And I do have my paper trimmer here. So I'm just going to put this in. I want to trim off this excess. So it doesn't really matter how big we're making it. There we, go. we just want a little bit of room there. So we'll go ahead and we're going to attach this onto the front like so. So we're going to use some stamping dimensionals to do that. And I've got some here. Now this may look like it's empty and they're all gone, but I'm very thrifty when it comes to my dimensionals. So I just take my snips and I just snip in here because this works just the same as those cute little hexagon pieces do, right? So we can just go ahead and stick two of these strips so we're not wasting any of our adhesive. We'll go ahead and peel those off. And then what we're going to do is we're going to line this up with the edge of the embossed piece. And then just stick that down. Okay. So there is the sentiment onto the front of our card. One more thing, two more things actually. We're going to add a little bit of bling to our card, of course, because it is a Christmas card after all. They for sure have to have some bling. So I'm going to add some Sweet Sorbet metallic woven ribbon. So you can see the shine and sparkle in that. We're going to loop it around this top flap only. Okay, and we're just going to give myself enough to tie a bow. I'm just going to snip, snip that off. Let's see how good I can tie a bow on camera. <laughs> all right. So we're just going to tie this. Oops. And I'm trying to get it lined up so it's like basically right over top of the Wink of Stella. Okay. So if I hold that down and tie it. Now this ribbon is very forgiving for this type of use. So I'll show you what I mean. Uh, if I can get it to, if I can tie a bow. Oh my goodness. <laughs> okay. One more try. There. There we go. Now it'll work. So there's my piece I'm going to pull through there. Okay. So see how it's kind of droopy and loose? That would drive me bananas. So what I like about this ribbon is if you just pull on these, it's nice and thin. And so as you pull it, it actually, oh, what the heck, it was doing it for me earlier twice. 
You just want to pull that tighter. And of course, it's not going to work tonight. All right. <laughs> Uh, seems like Tuesdays are always blooper nights here on Bird's Nest Designs, so hopefully you guys can all relate. Crafting doesn't always go the way we think it's going to. Sometimes we have these bloopers. Oh, that's a little bit better. Okay. There we go. That's nice and a little bit snugger. And then we're just going to pull these strands to get our bow a little bit smaller. I don't want a big, massive bow here. I just want a cute little bow. Add a little bit of sparkly pink bling. And then we'll go ahead and cut these tails off. Okay, so there's our cute little bow. And then we're gonna add, we're gonna add a couple more rhinestones. So I have my Jacob Pick tool right here. And we're just going to add a few. So I'm going to use some small ones and I'm going to stick them right to the side. This is why I wanted to leave a little bit of cardstock empty over here. And then we'll take a bigger one and we'll just stick a bigger one right down here by the trees somewhere. Just to kind of balance off the sparkle. Okay, so there is our card. Now we've made, created a really cute card. I think using just the stamp set. So even though those dies, like I mentioned, even though the dies are sold out, we can still make really cute cards using just that beautiful stamp. So um, I'm just going over with my bone folder because I want this to get a little bit flatter. One more time on this end here. There we go. Okay, so the card's going to fit like that. It's going to go into an envelope, no problem at all. And... It's not overly thick. It compresses nicely. Even when we open it up, it's going to look like this. So have a sweet Christmas sending love from our home to yours. Now, how adorable is that? So I'm looking at the comments and I'm getting lots of cute, beautiful, love it. That's awesome. I'm so glad you guys like this card. Um, I thought it was a really fun one to create using the sweet gingerbread stamp. So if you missed us in the beginning of the video today, um, this is the stamp set we're using from the mini catalog. It is on the last chance um, product list. So if you love the stamp set, it is available still. Um, however, the dies are sold out. But you can, like I just showed you, you can make really cute cards using just the stamp set. So I'm going to attempt <laughs> to flip this camera back down. So bear with me for one moment. I can see my ceiling quite well. Let's see if we can. There we go. Okay. I'm going to turn off that light so I don't have these rings in my eyes. There we go. Okay. Hello again. All right. So thank you so much for being here with me tonight to stamp and create this fun fold card. I don't really know what to call it. I kind of just created it today on the fly when I realized I was not going to use the dies. So um, I will have this uploaded to my YouTube channel tomorrow. It'll also be my blog post. For tomorrow morning um, so you can find it all there create with birds nest .ca. Um, I will have the measurements there will be a list to all of the products I use so if you're wondering or forgetting what I've used for tonight or if there's anything that you want to add to your collection that I've used you can just click on those links through that blog um, and it'll take you right to the online store all right so Thank you all for being here. We are already December 6th. I know everybody is probably crazy busy getting ready for the holidays. Um, so I really appreciate you taking time out of your evening to come stamp with me. Um, I hope you've liked tonight's card and I look forward to seeing you again next week. So have a wonderful Tuesday evening and a fabulous remainder of the week. I will see you guys all real soon. Cheers.